HDR or DRI for me is a tool to handle high contrast situations where I either can't use filters or where the use of filters just isn't enough to capture the complete dynamic range of a scene. So in the field I will usually bracket two or three exposures, sometimes even five, and make sure that those cover the complete dynamic range and that I don't lose any dark or bright tones. With this gathered raw data, I'm then very flexible during post-processing and can use different techniques to blend the exposures together. In this quick tutorial, I show you how I do it in Lightroom, but on my homepage, you'll also find an in-depth tutorial where I show other techniques like, for example, luminosity masks. You can just head over to my homepage and in the tutorial section, you'll find the exposure blending in Photoshop tutorial with all the information about what's covered. So before I show you how I blended this photo here, which I photographed in Frankfurt, I want to quickly walk you through the setup this morning. So first of all, I had my camera mounted on a tripod and I was also using a cable release as you see here. And then I had the lens very close to this fence here. The problem that morning was that there was a two meter or two and a half meter high fence and I couldn't shoot above it. So I had to basically shoot through this fence. And uh, fortunately with the tele uh, lens, the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, when I got close enough and zoomed in a bit, um, the fence was no longer in the frame. So this was very fortunate. Now let's take a look at the settings I was shooting with. So you see I'm here at 0 0.3 seconds and that I also have bracketing active. So I'm shooting plus and minus two for the bracketed exposures. Also, I have f9.5 as f-stop, which is my favorite f-stop when shooting with a 5DSR. And I'm also at ISO 100 to get a very clean image. Then what you'll notice, I have the two second timer, even though I'm shooting with the cable release. The reason for this is um, when, I, when I'm in live, uh, in live view and have this two second timer, um, it will, the camera will take all the bracketed exposures without me needing to um, press the shutter multiple times. So this is very nice. Also, I'm usually shooting in manual mode, which means I set the exposure time and the f-stop manually. Um, this is just uh, what I'm used to. Uh, throughout the morning, I'll just increase, uh, no, I'll just decrease the exposure time a bit and leave the f-stop alone. I just have more control and especially when I'm shooting uh, high dynamic scenes, I want to precisely that uh, set the exposure so I get a good histogram and also when bracketing I can make sure that I capture the whole dynamic range when I have the settings to manual. And last but not least, after taking the three bracketed exposures, I go to the preview and check the captured photos to make sure that I really don't have any blown highlights in the dark exposure and that the bright exposure shows all the shadows. I could also, and I often do, use the histogram to get an even better overview about the dynamic range which I captured. So here in Lightroom we can now examine some of the exposures I took that morning. Those here were taken a little later than in the video I just showed you, but it's the same composition, nearly the same settings, just a little shorter exposure times and I still have three bracketed exposures and if we look at the last ones here we see that for the dark exposure uh, I was using um, I am losing a bit of the dark tones but the bright areas here especially the sky and around the skyline are perfectly exposed then the middle exposure it's kind of a compromise where I lose some of the sky so the bright tones which are marked red here and some of the dark tones and finally there's the bright exposure where the sky is completely blown out but 
the dark areas and the foreground are very bright and looking at the histogram I'll get a very clean it's a very clean exposure for this part of the image and I gathered with those three photos the complete dynamic range of the scene that morning and it will now be easy to blend those together with the HDR function in Lightroom. So the first step is simply combining those three images into one which we can do if we go to photo then merge photos I'm sorry for the German version again but I think it's called merge photos in uh, the English version and then there's a option HDR and I click on it um, which will bring up this HDR dialog and I don't do much here so I was on tripod so I don't need to align the images then I won't do the automatic tonal setting here and since there are no moving elements in the photo I don't need to de-ghost the image so I leave this setting to none. Sometimes if you have some moving elements you can try to use some of those but if you have to go to medium or high uh, this is normally a case where I wouldn't use Lightroom to blend the images. There I would go with other techniques which I show in my other tutorials. But for a scene like this where there's nothing moving in the, in the scene and yeah, we just have static elements this HDR blend from Lightroom will work very well. So once Lightroom has finished its processing we'll find a new image here which is called or which has HDR in its name now and it's also a DNG now and this image is now the perfect starting point for further post-processing which we'll now do here in Lightroom. So I'm here in the basic settings tab and the first thing I'll do, I'll bring down the exposure a bit until the sky looks correctly exposed or like I want it to. So I go like this. Then since I'm losing now the dark tones, I can bring up the darks or the shadows a bit but not too much because if I go too far here um, I get an unrealistic HDR and this is not what I'm after so I'll just go up a touch here and then bring up the black values a bit just until um, the exposure warning for the dark tones which you see here those blue areas is gone and then I go a little farther but not too much because uh, I don't want to get a hyper-realistic result. I want to capture the mood with this image and the HDR or the bracket ex exposures. Um, I took those to get the complete dynamic range and then to use them to recreate the atmosphere but not to create some painting. So I don't go too far here. I can also bring down the lights a bit and then play with those sliders so just getting some compromise where I have all the details but it doesn't look yeah too unnatural so this is the first step here in the basic settings the next thing to do are my typical raw settings which I do to all of my photos I activate the lens correction and also very important reduce a uh, reduction of chromatic aberration then I reduce the detail settings or the sharpening a bit go down with the radius and reduce the amount because I usually sharpen in the end and I can also play around with the camera calibration and select some different profiles for example camera standard or faithful but I think for this image I'll just go with the Adobe standard and after I've done those settings I can now start to 
tweak the image a bit more creatively. And I could now either move over to Photoshop, which is normally my preferred way to do it, but with such a good starting point, you can also do further adjustments in Lightroom. So for example, I can head over to the curves and give this image a bit more contrast by pulling a slight S-curve here. And while I do this and darken the image, I go back to the basic settings and pull up the dark tones a bit more. So to make sure I don't lose any shadows. So it's always going back and forth between those settings. You can also bring down the lights a bit. What I could do, I could try to play around with the temperature here to see if I get the light a little warmer. Or another technique, which sometimes works, um, I could adjust the tones based on the brightness. So for example, for the lights, I could add some saturation and set a color here. And then for the dark tones, I would go for uh, with a bit of a cooler color to introduce a slight color contrast, not too much. Another thing I could do, I could tweak the colors individually with the HSL sliders. So let's see if we move the red a little more to the magenta area, also the orange on the other direction. Or we could play around with the saturation, increasing the saturation of the blues or decreasing it. But I think we don't need to do much here because as it is, the image already looks quite good. The only thing I do is to crop the image because down here, this area is a little, yeah, distracting. So I'd go with a crop where I just cut out this lower area and also get a little closer in here and then go with something like this. So you see in just a few minutes I could get quite a good result just by using Lightroom. But as I said, uh, I usually prefer to use Photoshop. So I want to show you what I actually did in Photoshop. So as you see, first of all, I have several bracketed exposures. So one here with the sun in it also. And another one where I have a train coming in on this side. So what I actually did, I combined all those bracketed exposure series in Lightroom. So it's like three. I exported them as TIFF and then imported them in Photoshop and blended them. So the, after the blend, I got something like this here, which is a little brighter what I showed you now in Lightroom because when I'm working in Photoshop, I usually export the image a little brighter than the final result I'm after. So I blended in this train. I have the sun here and also this train. So there's a little bit more going on. And then I just worked my normal workflow, darkening the image a bit, giving it a slight, a little bit more color, but not too much. And yeah, aiming for the mood which I perceived that morning.